This place is super busy and your school is probably no different. People rushing around, places to get to, not enough time to get there and deadlines to meet. And I find it can get a bit stressful. And stress in short bursts can be good for you. It gets you through exams or sports matches. But when it builds up and up and it takes over, it can have a big impact on your physical and mental health. We've all experienced stress. That deadline for your coursework, loads to do, time ticking away, but your phone keeps going off. You feel your chest tightening and a rising sense of panic. It's a horrible feeling. So what's actually happening inside your body? Well, adrenaline is being released from your adrenal glands, which makes your heart beat much faster. If this happens every now and then, it's okay. But if it happens again and again over a prolonged period, it's called chronic stress, and this has a serious effect on your health. For starters, it raises your blood pressure, putting a strain on your heart. It suppresses your immune system, so you're more likely to get ill. It changes your metabolism, so you can put on weight and may get problems like heartburn. And of course, it can lead to mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety, which can cause panic attacks. Everyone in their lives will experience probably moments of severe anxiety, and that's the first step on the road to having an attack. So it might look something like this. He's clasping his hands, he's looking around, but there's not a lot of visible external signs that he's really losing control. Zando, how are you feeling inside your own head? So I can feel my, my heart pounding, my chest is getting tighter, my hands are sweating, and all of those things are making me feel worse. At this stage, you may be able to get the panic under control, either by moving to a different place or speak to someone and feel a bit better. But you may not, and that's when the panic can get out of control and become a full-blown panic attack. So as Zand becomes more panicky, his body releases the adrenaline, and those hormones start to make his heart pound, his breathing rate increase. That makes his body feel physically very bad. That, in turn, increases the level of panic, and so Zand gets into a vicious cycle that he is unable to control. Anxiety or panic attacks happen because you've lost control of your breathing. You try to breathe in deeper and more quickly than normal. Overbreathing or hyperventilating causes a decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood, leaving you with too much oxygen and making you feel dizzy. Hyperventilation can also give you chest pains because it causes blood vessels in your body to constrict. Add to this the fact that the release of adrenaline has made your heart pump out blood faster and you've got sharp stabbing pains that feel like a heart attack. And that makes you panic even more. And that's when someone needs a bit of help. I know you're feeling terrible. Everything's going to be all right. I want you to listen to my voice. Close your mouth. Get your breathing under control, OK? You're going to be all right. Concentrate on something else. Focus on your feet. Close your mouth. Just put your finger on your mouth. And slow your breathing down, OK? You just breathe in and out through your nose. And that's good. Now have a seat, OK? That's good. How do you feel now? I actually feel, mainly I feel very tired. And although I was only pretending to have a panic attack, I can feel my heart rate racing and I do feel quite exhausted. So one of the things that you may have to do for someone who's had a panic attack and is recovering is getting them a glass of water, allowing them a bit of space, getting them to rest, sometimes a cup of tea. All those things can really help keep someone calm. For me, the turning point was talking to my school and my dad. My name's Richard, I'm 25 years old, and I have OCD and depression. OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. It manifested in ways such as not being able to touch the handles for doors in corridors when I was at school, and then I wouldn't be able to touch my carpet in my room. And I've got a great relationship with my dad, but I didn't feel like I could talk to him about it. How would someone comprehend, or I can't touch my bedroom carpet? The worst it was for me was when I was practically bedbound for nine months. I just didn't want to be here. I, I thought it would just be easier if I was gone. The turning point was talking to my school and my dad, and that led to me getting a diagnosis. One of the biggest misconceptions that people have about mental illness is that you get treatment and that's it, you're fine but it's an ongoing process for the rest of your life. Sundays are great days, and Sundays I wash my hands a hundred times till they're red raw. And that doesn't 
make me feel bad anymore because I am learning every day and equipping myself with the tools to deal with this illness. Your brain will try and convince you that you're the only one, don't say anything, you're a freak, but you're not. And talking about that changed my life. So we know what stress is and the damage it's doing to our bodies, but is there anything we can do about it? To find out, I've enlisted the help of this lot. The Team Yoga Crystal Palace group believe that doing exercise such as yoga has a beneficial effect on their mental health. Yoga helps me be more relaxed and makes you less stressed. It really helps you release all the tension in your body. Yeah, it sort of helps me regulate my emotions, anything that's going on which I can't sort of access verbally. Sounds like the perfect stress buster, but I'm putting an alternative theory to the test. And I'm going to find out if something completely different, like this, can really help up here. I've come to a choir rehearsal to see if singing has an effect on your mental health too. So the new Young Voice Collective certainly sound amazing, and they look like they're having a lot of fun. Can Zand and I scientifically show that our respective groups are reducing their stress levels? To find out, we're running an experiment. Both Chris and I asked for saliva samples from each person in our groups before they sang a note or did a single yoga move. You don't have to share them, by the way. Use your own, yeah? <laughs> no sharing. Next, we've asked them to do their activity for 45 minutes. OK, guys, take it away. Before we take another set of saliva samples. We're going to be sending all those samples off to a lab and testing them for a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is a marker of stress. High cortisol over long periods of time equals stress, which causes depression and anxiety. When you're stressed, your cortisol levels go up, and when you're relaxed and not stressed, they go down. Stand by me. Stand by me. So time's up. Let's collect another round of samples from the yogis and the singers. There we go, enough saliva to have a bath in. No. <laughs> Why, don't you want to have a bath in saliva? Uh, that's not natural. <laughs> <laughs> All the samples have been sent to a lab at Westminster University. While they're being processed, I'm finding out more about cortisol from Professor Angela Klo. Now, our cortisol levels change through the day, is that right? Absolutely. In the brain, we have something called the body clock, which is synchronised by light. And that light, in the morning when you wake up, it gives your cortisol a surge. And that's what gets you out of bed, and it prepares you for the day ahead. When you wake up, cortisol is the hormone that kick-starts almost every cell in your body into gear. Then it naturally wears off during the day, so you're ready to sleep soundly at night. How is it related to stress? Why is it bad to have too much of it? That's the thing, you see. It's also the stress response hormone. Anything a person finds stressful causes spikes in their cortisol. Stress is interrupting their natural cortisol cycle, and this is bad for your health. Cortisol is the link between what's going on in your mind to what's physically happening in your body. Absolutely. So those negative thoughts can generate the cortisol response, and that will have a cascade of events throughout your body. So back to our experiment. Can singing and exercise help you to maintain healthy cortisol levels? The saliva samples have been analysed. Let's check out the results. Well, it was fascinating results. I'm so pleased to be involved in it. When we looked at our singing group, we found they fell 46%. Wow. What about the yoga group? Wow, the yoga group were very interesting. They were lower before they started. However, they had a 33% fall. That is extraordinary. Both groups had a significant reduction in cortisol. This means that over time, their lifestyle choices are having a positive effect on their mental health. I think the message is that you, you find something that you enjoy that does it for you, and that's going to have a similar effect. So it's true. By measuring your cortisol, we can scientifically prove that exercise and fun activities can totally de-stress you. But you don't have to go out of your way to join a new group. There are things you can do anytime, anywhere, like mindfulness. So what exactly is mindfulness? Well, it's a simple type of meditation. Some schools, like this one, are running mindfulness classes, but you can also find plenty of free mindfulness apps on your phone. And if the mind wanders, just bring it back again and again. You focus your full attention on your breath as it flows in and out of your body. 
trying to focus 100% on the present moment. So what have you noticed in yourself since you started doing these classes? I'm much more relaxed. It actually changes my behaviour because I'm more relaxed and more calm in my lessons. I usually get overstressed and like I usually like cry a lot. So mm -hmm. what I do is instead of crying, I would do mindfulness from now on. I think it's very brave of you to admit to crying about your work. I, I think almost everyone probably at some point has cried about schoolwork or exams. Yeah. I can remember crying at medical school, you know, about lots of things. Yeah. Have your marks got better? Yeah. <laughs> really? I think so, yeah. Why not give mindfulness a go? You never know, it could make all the difference.